Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a Bluetooth speaker from Viva. Now when a company decides to create their own product after spending over 80 years engineering audio components for other major brands, the result is a fine craftsmanship in a class of its own. And without wasting much time, my name is Onyi and this is Copenhagen 2.4. If you've already seen a review of this speaker and you just want to hear the sound quality, then just go ahead and skip to the time code on the screen. Okay guys, before we get started, I'd like to disclose that this video is not sponsored. However, the speakers were sent over to us by Vifa on a short loan. That being said, my thoughts and opinions throughout this video remains entirely personal. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, in the box you get a quick start guide, safety and warranty sheet, some nice photography from Vifa with some statements at the back, a 3.5mm aux cable, regional power cords, a travel bag and the speaker itself. And at the time of recording this video, this whole unit comes in at about £560 in the UK. I noticed some little price differences depending on the color that you pick. So if you don't mind a different color, you can actually make a good saving. Now speaking about color, they've just launched a new color line called the Slate Black and I absolutely love the way this thing looks. Now if you're deciding to buy this speaker, just be sure to buy the 2.0 version because there's been a different version which is very identical to this one but they're very different in their features. And the speaker weighs about 4.6 kilograms. It's quite lightweight for me, but I must say it, it does feel quite hefty when you, when you lift it up. Okay, let's talk about design. And looking at this speaker, it reminds me of this old school stereo deck with the handlebar on the top. Despite the old school vibes, it still manages to project this minimalist yet very modern look, which I think will nicely complement a modern home setting. And the reason for that is because of this woven textile fabric that covers the entire speaker. Now, Viva collaborated with this company called Adrat, and it's one of Europe's leading manufacturer in textile designs. Now these guys are very skilled in the craft of making premium quality textile work. You may have already come across some of their work in various parts of the world. And if you've noticed, Harman Kardon also collaborated with this same company to create the fabric for their new Citation series. Now this goes to show that Vifa has probably been ahead of the competition in terms of the design materials that they use. Anyway, moving on. At the top of the speaker, it has a very fine handle with the Vifa logo on the side. Now the body of the speaker is made of what Vifa calls die cast aluminum. And the whole speaker feels quite premium and very rugged. But there's some areas around the front and the back that are made of a softer material. But in general, I think the drivers are well protected in this speaker. Okay, now let's take a look at the controls. Now at the lower right of the speaker, I really like how they've hidden the buttons under the fabric. I, I think it really looks quite cool. Starting from the top, it has the Viva play button. And this basically acts as a play and pause button. Right under that, it has the volume up and down buttons for adjusting the volume level. The buttons are not touch responsive. However, they do have a clicky tactile feedback, which is always very welcome. Okay, moving over to the back side, it has a power on and off button. And next, it has the connect button, which is used to activate the Bluetooth of the speaker. And next to that, you have the VFA link button, which is used to link more than one speaker together. And this is where this speaker really shines as a home audio system. We will take a look at that when we explore the VFA home app. 
Next to the VIFA link button is a battery level indicator and this is always very welcome when manufacturers include a battery level gauge on any speaker. Okay, over on this side, it has the input port and firstly, it has an auxiliary port for connecting a 3.5 millimeter cable to almost any device that uses um, the headphone out. And next to that, you have the standard USB port for connecting any a USB disc. Another thing you can do with the USB port is to use it as a charger. So you can actually charge up other devices when you connect them through that USB port. Looking underneath the speaker, it has these two rubbery pads to prevent vibrations from transferring from the speaker to the surface, which I think is quite good. Okay, now let's take a look on the inside of the speaker. On the top part, it has two dedicated 28 millimeter soft dome tweeters. And over here, it has two 50 millimeter mid-range drivers. And on here, it has a rechargeable lithium battery. And over here, it has a DSP six channel amplifier. Over at the center, it has what Vifa calls a force balance woofer. Now this, is very interesting. So basically you get bass radiation from the front of the speaker and from the back. Now that's cool. So Vifa says that this setup is used to provide a better bass response and to minimize the coloration and vibration noise. But lastly, it has four passive radiators set up in the same back-to-back -back position, just like we saw in the subwoofer. Now, if this speaker is a little too big for what you need, you can actually consider the Oslo, which is basically half of the Copenhagen. I'll play a few samples during the sound test so you can hear the difference between the Oslo and the Copenhagen 2.0. Very similar, but very different in sound quality. Okay, another thing I'd like to mention is that the battery life is rated for seven hours playback time. And charging up a dead battery from zero to 100% takes about three hours to complete. Now this speaker can stay actively connected while on standby for as long as you have it plugged into power, which is just superb. So when you come back from work, you don't need to manually start pairing the devices and the speakers and everything. You just need to make sure your device is connected to the network. Go into the app, play a song, speaker wakes up, plays it back. Now this brings us to the app, and this is by far one of the best features that I like about the Viva Home speakers. Now once you're in the app, you can do things like adding multiple speakers to your network, you can play different songs on different speakers at the same time. You can control their volume independently, or you can easily pair them together and control them as a group or individually. But you can also set the speakers to either be a left channel or right channel. Now this is very useful if you want to set up a really nice stereo left and right channel in your home. Or you can have both speakers play back as a dual stereo system so the left speaker plays back both the left and right channel and the right speaker plays back both the left and right channel. Now another cool feature I came across in this speaker is the ability to have them double up as a Wi-Fi hotspot. So for every place that you have each of these speakers, they can work as a hotspot for that area. Now, when you swipe to the right, you get access to a list of music streaming services. And if you have a subscription, you can easily access your music directly from this app. You can also play locally stored music on your device and control it within the app. Now, the app is super stable. It's never crashed on me as of yet. I've used it for some weeks now and it's been consistent. And I think this is one of the best features in this speaker. And if I was to give it a rating, I would give it a whopping 8.5. I'd give it a 9 just because of the way it looks, the way it works and how easy it is to pair your speakers. Everything just works and also the added radio library and the playlist option. Everything is just laid out very nice and easy. 
I think it's something that they've done very, very well. So well done for this app. So now I'm done talking for this speaker. I'm gonna let it do the talking. It's time for the sound quality test. So please put on your headphones for the best experience. And after the test, I'll give you my opinions and comment on a few things. Okay, Copenhagen, take it away. Okay, as you just heard, the speaker sounds amazing, especially with the detail and the clarity. Of course, the recording doesn't do 100% justice to represent how the speaker sounds, but it does give you some idea of what to expect if you are to buy the speaker. Now the mid-range definition is beautiful, like guitars and vocals, they just stand out. The bass of the speaker is really good, but it does lack a little bit of fullness when you're below 50%. But as soon as you start to increase the volume to 60%, that's when the drivers really start to resonate really well. Of course, you get the front resonation and a back resonation. So if you're behind the speaker, you're going to hear a good amount of bass, and if you're in the front, you also hear a good amount of bass. Another thing to note is this is a stereo speaker and the sound stage is awesome. I love the stereo imaging. The separation is really nice. Now, of course, the stereo is all functioning within a width of 40 centimeters, but you can actually hear the separation on the channels. Now, speaking about stereo, this speaker can be paired with a second one to create an even wider stereo separation. Here's a sample.
Okay, I hope the stereo came through in the recording, but one thing I can tell you is that it really sounds good. So the one thing I forgot to mention is each time you switch on the power, the speaker automatically remembers the last paired state and it connects itself back together again. Now I also found that the audio and video lip sync was flawlessly locked on when you're using just one speaker. When you have them set up in stereo mode, you start to get a, a second delay between the video and the audio and it didn't really stay in sync when you have them in stereo. Now this is not a problem with these speakers. I've experienced the same problem with other top brands like the Harman Kardens and JBLs. Once you have a second speaker playing at the same time, they tend to lose their low latency uh, sync. So overall, I really like this speaker. It definitely has a place in my home. Now I'm actually thinking of buying the Viva soundbar, the Stockholm 2.0 for my TV. Um, although it's going to cost a bunch, considering the Viva sound quality, I think it would be amazing. Okay guys, it's time for the things I don't like. On this channel, we look out for some possible issues that you might have to live with on your purchase. And here are a few points to consider. And the first point is the volume level. At about 50% volume, you still don't get enough loudness from the speaker like you would do from other Bluetooth speakers. Now this is not a problem, I just found it to be a little odd and unusual. Now this leads me to the second point. And when you're turning up the volume on your device, you get a fine level increase up to about 70%. Now between 70 to 100%, you get huge loudness jumps. Now when you're adjusting the volume on the app, you get a more fine adjustment throughout the range. You do get a fine control as well when you're adjusting it on the body of the speaker. Once again, it's not much of a problem, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, the red lights are off and there wasn't anything major that I could find. And in general, I think it's a really good speaker to have. And one of the reasons is because of the amount of detail you get in the mid range and in the high frequencies. Also with good amount of bass. Now this is really impressive for a portable Bluetooth speaker. The combination of the high quality textile and the aluminum frame is just nicely executed. And what do I think about the price? Okay, now over 500 pounds, it's already a lot for one speaker. And getting two of these will set you back over a thousand pounds. Now that's a lot of cash for so many of us. But here is the deal. When a brand makes a premium product, it deserves a premium price. And if you have a premium home, you need a premium speaker to get premium sound. Okay, that's it from me guys. If you like this video, then hit the like button to let us know you liked the video. And if you have any questions about this speaker, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you like to see more in-depth products reviews like this one, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you haven't already and switch on the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload anything new. And until next time, my name is Oni with Osiman Media and I'll see you in the next video.